Doing flight instruction in Maryland, there's a great VOR in Carroll County where we can practice a bunch of procedures and approaches. It's the Westminster Vortac. It's usually a madhouse of trainer aircraft, but today in the sim, we've got the skies to ourselves. If you're doing any instrument training at the moment or want to bone up on your IFR knowledge, check out our new 15-page IFR study guide PDF linked right here or in the description. It has everything you need to know to be a great IFR pilot. We're at 3,000 feet, flying about a 170 heading inbound towards the Westminster VOR. We have the VOR tuned on our NAV 1 with the OBS twisted such that the needle is centered and we have a 2 indication. We'll keep the needle centered, chasing left and right as needed, as we fly inbound. We're looking to fly the VOR Alpha approach at Clearview Airport, a nifty little airport in Westminster that features an 1800 foot runway, great for practicing short fields. You even get a little mug if you land here. The VOR approach here is no cakewalk either. We'll be flying to the VOR, turning outbound on the 055 radial, then executing a procedure turn. This procedure turn is the barb type, getting rarer these days. We'll make a left turn to 010, time 1 minute, then make a right to 190 to intercept and fly inbound along the same radial. So here we're flying inbound. When the flag flips from to to from, we're going to make a left standard rate turn to 055. We're also going to twist our OBS to set the inbound course for the approach, 235. Now, in the profile view on the plate, it tells us that when doing the procedure turn, we need to stay within 5 miles of the EMI Vortac. We don't have DME on board here, but we can estimate that at 100 knots, with minimal winds, a tenth of an hour will take us 10 miles. A tenth of an hour is 6 minutes, which all you lawyers and accountants out there who get paid in billable hours know all too well. That takes us 10 miles, but we need to stay within 5 miles, half of that, so that's only 3 minutes. We'll err on the side of caution and fly just 2 minutes outbound like this. When we're ready, we'll make our left standard rate turn to 010 to begin the procedure turn. Once rolling out, we start timing 1 minute. Now that we're in the procedure turn, we could descend from our altitude down to 2600 feet, as shown on the profile view. After the one minute is up, we're going to make a right turn back around to 190. This will give us an intercept for the inbound course 235. We should be able to keep our turn going to pick up the needle, rolling out with it just about centered. We're now established on the inbound course. We can descend to the next step down, 1900 feet, where we'll get the final approach fix, the VOR. As we approach station passage, we can begin to configure for the approach. It's around this time that we get our approval from ATC to switch to the advisory frequency. With the flag flipping to from, we can start our descent down to the MDA 1320. We'll level off at 1400 to give it room. We're also timing our FAF to map time using the table below the runway diagram. This is not a straight in approach. We'll be coming at the runway almost perpendicular. So let's say we want to land runway 14, we'll be breaking off to the right, keeping the field in sight the whole time. The runway is back behind us, and we're really not in a great position to land, so we decide to go missed. Going missed on a circling approach, where we're past the missed approach point, involves making a climbing turn in towards the airport. And once we're above the first altitude on the missed procedure, 1500 feet, we can execute the rest of it, going all the way back up to 2,600 feet in a climbing left turn direct to the VOR. We'll cut it short here rather than going through the full VOR hold, but you can learn all about that as well as every other procedure and facet of IFR flight by signing up for our popular Instrument Ground School. Check it out and more at the Flight Insight website linked here. See you there.